What's up, exiles? It's Gemini, and you've probably been wondering, what the fuck am I doing in this Prophecy League? Well, I've been playing a Duelist Essence Drain Champion. We're currently level 91 in the Hardcore Prophecy League, and we're cruising. Before we talk about the build, let's talk about the skills that are used and how they work and synergize with each other. Essence Drain is a spell that is a single target projectile, and it has an upfront payload of chaos damage. In addition to that upfront payload, it comes with a significant dot degen. The dot degen can then be proliferated with a skill called contagion. It looks like a curse, and basically it does a little bit of damage over time, and any mob that dies from contagion or essence drain degen, it will then spread to other enemies. And this is what creates the chain or domino effect that you see on the screen. When a monster dies with this degen, it creates a new contagion circle equal to that of the original one, Anything within that radius gets a snapshot of the dot applied to them. An easy way to understand it, it's like a set spike combo. You kind of curse a bunch of mobs, then you apply a dot to them, that dot then proliferates. Another tool used to enhance these overall mechanics is a spell called Wither. This is a channeled skill. You can channel it yourself, but the easiest way to support it is to put it on a spell totem and have the totem debuff monsters for you. So you might be wondering, why would you self-cast Wither in the first place? Well, at very low levels, when you can't poison with Essence Drain, Wither is a way to scale damage when you don't have access to poison early game. Since the bulk of your damage comes from the Essence Drain dot, and you cannot stack this dot, Wither becomes a nice option if you choose to use it. And the last few things to note about Wither is that it has a very short duration. The debuff only lasts 0.63 seconds, so unless you're actively channeling it or have a totem channeling it for you, you're not going to really have enough time to apply a skill and get the stack up. For every stack of Wither that's applied to the target, you get a 7% increased chaos damage bonus. This stack can go up to 20 times. Alright, that was some quick information about how the skills work. Now let's talk about the build choices and how it enhances this character. The main question that gets brought up in my stream is why did you go Duelist Champion and not Occultist or even Trickster? And the answer to that is pretty simple. Fortitude. You have Fortify. Duelist is the only class in the game that can use Wands and have Fortify at the same time. In the most recent major patch, both Wands and Scepters have had their implicit properties increase substantially. On higher level requirement Wands such as the Opal Wand, you can see spell damage modifiers up to 42%. And in this case, I'm using an Abued Wand with 37% and a demon horn with 34%. It's important to note that spell damage modifiers apply to both the upfront hit of essence drain and the dot degen. It also affects contagion, but contagion doesn't do that much damage to begin with. So it's not only the implicit on the new and improved wands, but it also has to deal with the stats they have to offer. And one of the two main stats they have to offer that daggers can't is the ability to get cast speed. You can get up to 25% increased cast speed on each wand. The other stat you can get on wands and not daggers is projectile speed. And you can get projectile speed up to 46% per wand. Now it can be argued that projectile speed doesn't really do much, but when you get a 6 link and you run slower projectiles, it actually does quite a bit. So the hypothetical best in slot wand would include the following prefixes. Spell damage, spell damage and mana hybrid roll, and then the crafted damage over time mod you can get from the Forsaken Master Leo. And as for suffixes, you're probably going to want cast speed, projectile speed, and mana regeneration. So now that we've covered wands, and the duelist ability to get fortify with fortitude using wands, let's talk about the other perks in the duelist ascendancy tree and how it affects the build. It is important to note that I didn't run the lab until I could run the cruel lab, because I needed 4 points to hit fortitude. Unstoppable Hero unfortunately has no effect until you're able to get Fortify, and since I leveled up as a bow character, I was still unable to get Fortify until I got Fortitude. So after the Merciless Lab, I chose Inspirational for my next two Ascendancy points. This notable gives you and your nearby allies 35% increased damage, and that's global damage, and 8% movement speed all the time. And for the most part, normally I usually make characters that use Whirling Blades or Leap Slam to move around, this character uses traditional movement speed that's enhanced both by the ascendancy and itemization to get around. 
Since I always have Fortify, there's no need to whirl through a mob or leap on top of a mob to put Fortify up. Let me give you guys a quick rundown of where I get movement speed enhancements to the character. We have my Etsiri step that have a base of 30% increased movement speed. In addition, I got the Lab Enchant of 10% increased movement speed if you haven't been hit recently. And near the Duelist start, we have a notable called Art of the Gladiator. This ignores all movement speed penalties from armor. Moving along, I'm using the Assassin's Haste Jewel in one of my jewel sockets. This is a quest reward that can be obtained by any character. And it just so happens to be a great clear speed jewel for this character. Cast speed greatly enhances my ability to dish out the combo of Contagion and Essence Strain. Not only that, but it keeps me safer because it gives me more maneuverability. The quick cast speed allows me to dodge leapers, chargers, and a lot of projectiles. Moving along to the Shadow Start, we have Fangs of the Viper that grants 5% increased movement speed. Looking at my chest, I'm using an Assassin's Garb which has an implicit base of 3% increased movement speed. In addition, with my Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline, this character runs very fast. I have a base movement speed modifier by 67%, and it goes up to 137% movement speed with my Quicksilver of Adrenaline. So if there are any concerns of not being able to move fast because you're not using Whirling Blades, you can throw those out the window. So now let's go over the skills and the supports that are linked to it. We have Essence Drain linked with Pierce, which is a more multiplier. It's very mana friendly, 110%, and it affects the dot and the upfront projectile. Rapid Decay is another more multiplier that only enhances the dot damage, and it reduces the skill effect duration, but that doesn't really matter too much. We have Void Manipulation, which is another more multiplier. This affects the dot and the upfront projectile. The downside of this gem is 25% reduced elemental damage, and any elemental damage you do with this build is pretty irrelevant. And now we have Control Destruction. This one is a 42% more spell damage modifier. In addition, it does reduce the critical strike chance by 100. And I will say crits are not needed with this build because the damage over time is enough to carry. However, it's a nice little added bonus when you do crit. And while I don't have a 6 link right now, I can tell you the 6 link for this particular setup would be slower projectiles. And you may be wondering why am I not using poison as I'm not using a consuming dark. In the previous league, Consuming Dark was a very popular choice for ED Contagion builds because it allowed you to poison, essentially giving you another link for free. But going into the Prophecy League, we have access to a new chess piece called Cosprey's Will. This is an insane chest that allows you to get one additional curse. It allows you to bypass a property called Hexproof, which is Curse Immunity. And it just so happens that they renamed the Curse Immunity map mod to Hexproof. So now you can basically run curse immune maps without it affecting your clear speed or character's defense. But that's not all. This chest gets better and better. It also has the ability to poison curse enemies on hit. Luckily we're using Essence Strain which has an on hit payload of chaos damage. So in order to take of all the chest properties we're using Blasphemy which turns my curses into auras and I'm using Temp Chains and Vulnerability. Vulnerability scales damage over time, and that damage over time gets snapshotted and spread with Contagion. Temp Chains makes the degen last longer, and it also slows the monsters down to keep me safe. And while this chest does not have any life on it, it can give you up to 1500 evasion, and it gives you up to 30 chaos resist, which is the hardest resist to get in the game. Overall, this chest is bad fucking ass, and it comes at a respectable price tag of 2 to 3 exalts. Before I was able to afford this chest, I was using a Restless Ward and a Dodri's Ring. You thought I was going to say Elixir. Shame on you. But that would be a good budget way of starting a build. With the Restless Ward you would get more life regeneration, you would get more movement speed, and you would get very reliable charges as they would last at least 20 seconds each. And while on the surface it looks like you lose 60 life, but since you're not using a Dodori's ring with a Cost Priest chest, you'll actually get that life back with a life roll on a ring. And the reason why Cost Priest Will is so beautiful for this build is I'm effectively using a 6 link when I'm using a 5 link because I get the poison. So I never have to pay the mana multiplier of the poison support gem, and I never have to link it. So my 6 link will be slower projectiles and it'll feel like a 7 link because of poison. The beautiful thing is there are no required uniques for this build. If you want to get dual curse, you're going to have to either choose a Corrupted Necklace with plus one curse, Cost Priest Will, or Dodri's Damning. I don't recommend Wind Screams because they have horrible movement speed and you need a movement speed to get around. 
At series step is a great choice in the boot slot as it provides a lot of evasion which you can scale, life, movement speed, and gives you some spell dodge. It's a good idea to use rare boots until you're so far over the resist cap that you can fit these in. For my belt slot it was important that I had an open prefix on it so that I could craft up to 5% movement speed with a divine orb and the Tor master. The glove slot is nothing special other than life and resist. It is worth noting that on one of your four link items you're going to need four blue. So I would recommend an evasion ES piece because getting four blue on its series step with 120 base decks will be rough on your chromes. The four blue links in my gloves are Contagion, Increased Area of Effect, Flame Dash, and Faster Casting. The four link in my boots consists of Arctic Breath, Vol Lightning Trap, GMP, and Castle Damage Taken. Castle Damage Taken is left at level 1 so it can trigger as many times as possible so that it can lay out Chilled Ground and slow enemy monsters while not costing me a curse. Vol Lightning Trap has no interaction with Castle Damage Taken so it's effectively a single link. On the corner of my chest piece is Arctic Armor because green is really easy to get on an Assassin's Garb. In one of my wands I have Spell Totem linked with Wither and Faster Casting. And it is worth noting that I rarely feel compelled to use a Wither Totem unless I'm in a high tier map with Enfeeble and more monster life and I'm fighting a boss. That's why when I 6 link my chest, I'm going to replace Faster Casting with this 3 link with either Arctic Armor or Vol Lightning Trap. On my other wand, it just so happens that it has plus level of socketed gems. This is a great opportunity to put my very strong curses in here along with the Blasphemy support gem. And it gets a little annoying when I weapon swap because it'll turn off my Blasphemies. However, it is definitely worth it. Plus one gems is not mandatory by any means for this build to work. Moving to my helmet, you'll notice that it just has life and resist and a decent amount of armor and evasion. The ideal lab helmet enchant would include the increase in radius to contagion. And as for my jewelry pieces, you see that there's nothing special other than life, resist, and things that support mana and mana regeneration. All three stats were very easy to get on this character so you should have no problems with that. The bandit reward in normal mode was oak for the HP, Aramir for the skill point in cruel, and in merciless it's very flexible whether or not you want to get the extra endurance charge from oak or if you want to get the extra frenzy charge for more deeps from Creighton. And in my case, I chose Creighton. The defenses on this character might not be very transparent, but it's very, very effective. We have a 15% chance to block. We have Fortify at all times, a passive 67% movement speed, 11k evasion with 1.3k armor that goes up to 12k with the granite, and it goes up even further than that with the first to strike, last to fall ascendancy node. It gives me 200% increased armor and evasion rating when I'm on low life. In addition to being brought down to below 35% HP, it removes all my elemental status ailments. This means if I'm frozen, shocked, or ignited, it will be purged off of me. Another cool thing about First to Strike is that it gives me 40% global damage when I'm not on low life. So whenever I'm between 100 to 35% HP, I have 40% increased damage. The last property on this notable doesn't really have an effect on my character. It says your hits permanently intimidate enemies that are on full life. And since I usually cast Contagion first, and Contagion has a dot in itself, the monsters are taken off full life. And Contagion doesn't have an on-hit payload. But the other properties are very, very significant. And currently we have 283 life regeneration per second, with the ability to cast Enduring Cry, which gives us a small surge. And I've seen upwards of 2k life regen spikes thanks to Essence Strain because it allows you to regenerate 0.5% of your debuff damage as life. Note that this is not Leech and it does not work in no regen maps, but in non no regen maps it's significant. One thing I love about this character is I have the ability to run all map mods. It's not the fastest clear speed out there, but it has a very respectable one. And there's something so satisfying when you get to watch all the monsters fall over like dominoes. As far as the leveling process goes, the duelist doesn't have access to most of the gems I use, so you end up having to buy it off a witch or a shadow. And since I did this as my first character in a brand new league with no currency, I leveled up with Rain of Arrows, Burning Arrow, and Blast Rain for single target. I fully intended on switching to ED Contagion at around Merciless Dried Lake. Unfortunately, I didn't have the currency or the resources to do so. Now that the Prophecy League has matured and you have easy access to Elrion Jewelry and 5 links, I would highly recommend that you switch as soon as you can get the 5 link, or you can even use a Tabula Rasa. 
If you would like to know more about the leveling process, make sure you check the YouTube description as it contains a forum thread with all my documented progression both in gear and in the skill tree. I've been having a blast in the Prophecy Challenge League. We've currently completed 34 out of the 40 challenges. Thanks to this build, I was able to complete some of the harder challenges that include Defeat the Pale Council, Clear the Twin Maps, 8 Property Maps, Farm Uber Azaro, and do the Unidentified Maps. Thank you guys for watching the video, and if you guys have any further questions, you can catch me live or you can post here. I'm Hegemony, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Like, share, and subscribe.